Okay, this is how I make jerky out of hamburger. This are my seasoning packets. I'm going to use four of those. And then the curing salts that go with it. You always use them in tandem. I have the jumbo jerky gun. I like to use this strainer because it helps me to spread it a little bit more evenly with the, with the seasoning and the curing salts. Use a bowl for mixing the meat with the, with the seasoning. I always have roll of paper towels and I have a couple dehydrators here. Originally these came with like a with bottoms to it as well, but eventually those wore out. And I just put one of these on the bottom. Even sometimes if I am out of space, I'll use that just as the bottom one with meat on it as well. Using these Nesco dehydrators here. Went to Sam's Club and got a Looks like it's five and a half pounds worth of, of meat. I use 10% lean. You can use the 20%, but during the, the drying process, you're gonna get a lot more fat and, and grease that will uh, drip down. With the 10%, you get very minimal of that amount, and so it also leaves you more meat. Now where I've got my uh, dehydrator, I went to Nesco.com. And the one that I have now goes for, let's see, they have it on sale for $64.99. Or no, I'm, uh, yeah, $64.99. That's like the same dehydrator like I have. There, there are some other cheaper options too, as you can see here. You've got a, one that's for uh, $49.99. That actually comes with a small jerky kit as well. And then the jerky kits, you have the smaller one that's on sale now for $14.95. And or the jumbo one, that's the one I use. I used to have the smaller one and I still have several of those. But uh, the jumbo one, you can put a full pound of meat in it and it's just a lot quicker. With your seasoning options, they have like a trial pack which comes with two seasonings and two salts, $1.99 each. Or they have like a 10 pack, and it looks like that's for, uh, on sale for $8.90. They have like a variety pack that'll give you several different types or you can just order like 10 each of the kind you like or a 25 pack that's your best value for $19.95 okay when I mix it I do anywhere from uh, one to maybe two pounds worth of meat per packet here so that one was what 5.54 pounds so we've got about two and a two point seven five pounds roughly for two of these here so it's Maybe, you know, a little bit stronger that way. Sometimes, if it's sat for a little bit, I'll, I'll smack this a little bit to make it a little bit looser. But I start off, I will take my little strainer here, tear open the, the curing salt, kind of sprinkle it along here, try to get it kind of evenly about the top here. And I'll open up one of the packets of seasoning. This one here I'm doing original. And I will spread that over here. Try to get it somewhat even as well. Even though you'll be mixing it up so it doesn't have to be perfect. Press it in, flip it over, and do the same thing here. You see sometimes you'll get little little chunks in there and that's why I utilize this so then I can just kind of run it through here because if you get a, a big chunk in there you'll definitely taste it once it's done cooking. 
then I just mix it. Obviously you wash your hands first. get it thoroughly mixed so that it looks pretty even throughout. See, so you take on a little bit darker color. At this point I'll wash the excess off of here. Do that real fast and be right back to you. one of my trays open up my jerky gun or jerky kit like I say with this large one here you can put a full pound inside of it and that does just about perfect for one tray with the smaller one you, you do four rows with this one you can do three Push the button right here to kind of loosen it so you can slide it up and in. Adjust your angle on this so that it'll work for you here. And I just start squeezing. And kind of start adjusting it, turning it as I go. Sometimes if I have a little excess, I'll just kind of put it in the little spots in there. And then you just repeat that until you have all your trays filled. Okay, now that I finished putting it together, I got three rows of these. <clears throat> and then I put one of these in the bottom. Now when you buy it, it will come with a base that you can just utilize, but I've done this enough over the years and had them long enough, the base eventually cracked and broke. So now I just use an empty tray as the bottom. Put it on here, make sure I turn it to the maximum 155 degrees. Make sure it seals tight. Got both of them going now. Now I will do it for four hours, and then after four hours I will take this off. I will flip the pieces because they'll start to dry and then reverse the order. I'll show that in four hours, and then I do it for another four hours. So I cook it for about eight hours is how long I dehydrate it. Okay, this is after cooking it about four hours. Actually today it was closer to five, but by using the, uh, the uh, trays that I'm using, it's not as much a biggie doing it this way. Since these are ones that are porous, you know, you don't have anything on it, I just take it, flip the whole thing over. By now it's already starting to, you can see the bottom of it and how it's cooking here. Now at the beginning I used to use these kind of trays, but I just use these for like fruit leather now because they would only cook kind of on the top and they wouldn't cook under because it's solid there. So anyways, I take it and I flip the pieces over and then put them back on in reverse order so that the bottom is now closer to the top to the top and then I put them back on this this empty one here now I'll cook it the rest of the, the time the, 
eight hours total. And if they feel, you know, not like they've cooked, like they need a little bit more, I'll put them on a little longer. It doesn't hurt. Might just become a little harder if you overcook it. You can see it's starting to get a little bit greasy from that. Now, had this been the 20% lean, it would have even been more so. And like under this, that's why I use like a clean flat surface like our table here. Because it'll be easier to clean up. Okay, got them back on, seated, and we'll come back in about three and a half hours or so from now. Oh, something too I wanted to mention is right after I got done starting the the dehydrators, when I got everything loaded on, I cleaned up the uh, the jerky kit right away. This I don't put in the dishwasher, I clean it by hand, because you want to scrub and make sure you get all the little nooks and crannies and all the little maybe cracks and things so that there's no extra meat just sitting around and you know drying on it. Uh, if you clean it pretty quick then I just leave it to air dry. If you clean it, clean it pretty quick it's a lot easier to clean too. Now that I'm ready to pull everything off, kind of set up my paper this way, some paper towels. I use these small ones like this so I can do them like three long here and fold them over so this way it kind of absorbs it better so I get everything set up and I'll actually leave it cooking and just pull off one tray at a time take it straight from that and put the tray in the sink right away so I can wash them as soon you know while they're still hot and everything comes off quite a bit quicker okay so I'll pull it off leave it cooking here look right here Right off, I take this, just kind of wipe the excess grease off so it's a little easier to clean. Take this over, stick it in there to soak for a minute. And then I come back and you can see how it's kind of damp from the excess on it. And again, if you use the 80% the, uh, lean instead of the 90% or 93%, you'll definitely have more on it. As well as like under here right now, so you don't see a ton here, but you will if you if you use the 80%. Feet. I just kind of try to dry it off well like that. This will be a little bit. If I see a little extra like that, maybe I'll dab it. And I'll take it over here. We already have another thing set up. And I will put it on this and uh, I'll actually leave it for several hours. If I do it like at night, I'll even leave it covered overnight just so it has a chance to kind of dry a little bit more. Dump it here, wipe it off at this point, and then I'll come on over to this one that I already started. I have it in hot soapy water already. And I found that if I do this right away, it just makes the cleanup so much easier. Nothing else is sticking because it already in hot water and I go back to what I'm doing here and just like I say I keep this going until it's until I'm on the last one then I'll unplug it and then I'll wipe down and I'll wash the uh, but I will wash them in the water but I will wipe them down the dehydrator after I'm done okay so as you can see you know this is about the size it makes on each one I will cover it and leave it for, you know, overnight. And once I, you know, do it, it gets a little more brittle in the end. Right now it just kind of tears, but I like to tear it in about this size pieces because then it doesn't cut any bags if you put it in like quart bags or anything like that. And, and uh, it's good stuff right now, but I'll cover it like this just to keep, keep it kind of protected. And let it sit for, you know, anywhere from 6, 8, 10 hours or something like that. 
and then I put it away and it keeps good even without putting it in the fridge that will that will make it last longer but it'll keep a couple weeks pretty good just like as it is or if you vacuum seal it you know you can definitely keep it longer like that as well or in the fridge or even the freezer